Hello, everybody. It's Friday, which means we're here to talk about some new features for the week. And the old games from last week will go off sale as soon as the, these uh, are up today, and they will be through the end of the week. A little more on that at the end. First, I want to tell you about the games. Um, and I don't know if any of you could figure out what the connection was, so I put the picture. You could add it in the in the chat, but it is the designer. The designer is Phil Walker Harding, and he is a designer of games from Australia. And you probably all know who he is by his most famous game, Sushi Go. And I have Sushi Go Party, uh, which is also designed by him, but it's uh, maybe one you don't know about, so I was just gonna talk about it real quick. Even though it's not really one of our features, it is designed by today's feature designer, Phil Walker Harding. But unlike regular Sushi Go, you get to choose which desserts and appetizers and rolls that you're gonna use, add it to the board so players know what's in this round, and then choose those cards from the box, shuffle them all up, and that's your deck, and that's how you play. And it gives a whole bunch of new things uh, for Sushi Go, different desserts, uh, so you get like fruit, it has um, uramaki, miso soup, edamame, soy sauce, takeout. So different cards from the base game as well as the same cards. And uh, it also goes up to eight players so you can have more people play. So again, not really talking about that. That's just Sushi Go Party. If you don't know Sushi Go, you should play Sushi Go. <laughs> you should play Sushi Go Party. Uh, it is a great little card game. Even, I mean, it's for kids and adults. I play with my friends. I think it's fantastic. All right, so what are we talking about first from that selection? And the first one I wanna talk about is called Silver and Gold. This one came out recently, within the last year, about a year ago. And it is a flip and write from Phil. And this game has one of my favorite features of all flip and writes or roll and writes ever. Usually you have a piece of paper or something that you're writing on. In this one, you are actually going to write on the cards in the deck. So you're gonna have some of these in front of you. There'll be different colors, different shapes, different things on them. <laughs> and then we're gonna flip over a shape and you're gonna draw this shape on one of your cards. Watch, learn. Mm -hmm. Oh, so excited. I know you're thrilled to be watching me write on this card. But look, I wrote on the card. It's crazy. And I love it. And I wish more games would let you write on the components of the game. Because it does come off pretty easily. These are fantastic pens. They're Faber-Castell. And um, what you're trying to do is fill up your uh, cards with those X's. Covering up palm trees lets you score some things immediately. Covering up coins is a little bit of a race trying to get some of the the bigger trophy points by doing rows of coins faster than your opponents. The points you'll score just from completing cards, um, and then it also allows you get new cards, which you then want to complete. And then there's uh, seals on some of the cards that give you extra bonus points for other colors. So if I had this finished and I had this card, it would also be worth 11 points instead of only 10. So you get to um, fill up your cards, comes right off. Uh, when you're done and uh, you're going through these decks of different shapes and drawing them onto the tetris -y, trying to rotate and flip and make them fit into those spaces to fill up uh, the card that you have. So that is silver and gold. It's a quick little roll flip and write, easy to learn, easy to play, one that I pull out all the time. Um, we really like it, two player, it works just fine and it's only $19.95. Okay, <laughs> the next one is a bigger one. Uh, it's been out for a little while and this has got a fabulous centerpiece. It's a marble container. So uh, it's a little hard to see, but you are actually got marbles in the top container. That's just an illustration, but you're gonna have marbles in there. And then when you take them from the row, a new marble slides in and fills this place. If you can see that there, I wish there was a red one in there. Let's fake it. There we go. 
I don't go backwards. Uh, oh, now I'm gonna have marbles all over my living room. I was just too excited to show you this, but it's <laughs> now it's overflowing. But uh, the marbles come out as you take them one by one. And um, what you're going to do in the game is you are taking cards and they're gonna go in front of you in kind of your little workspace and they're gonna go into different sections. And the cards, um, when you build them, will live beneath here on your table and they have different levels of play, kind of an easy level, medium level, and hard level. Hard level. And when you take these cards, they're all gonna have different things. They're gonna have a different type of card, some kind of action, possibly some points, a cost, and then just a little illustration. But when they go down in front of you, uh, the whole point of the game is to build up a series of these to create chain reactions. So at the start of the game, the actions are simple. You're sort of reserving a card, or taking a marble, or spending some of the marbles to build a card, paying its cost. But once you've got more and more cards under there, Every time you pick a marble, maybe it says if you pick a blue marble, you get to take a, a red one as well. Or if you pick a blue marble, you get to build something. So you get to start doing more than one action. And then maybe if I take a green marble that lets me build something and I build a yellow and it says if I build a yellow, I also get to pick randomly from here. And you see it kind of starts to compound against each other and it, it flows into this great little uh, chain reaction game so it's very satisfying when you get to kind of that mid game point where you're starting to be able to do all these different things on your turn instead of just one action um, and uh, building those chains is the whole point of the game because the more uh, cards you can get out the more points that you can start to accumulate and a lot of those uh, higher uh, level three cards are harder to build but they're going to give you a lot more points at the end of the game so I won't go into all the details of that one, but it's a fun little game. I love the little marble centerpiece that you use to play the game. <laughs> and it um, is uh, only $39.95, which actually is a pretty good, pretty big box. It's a little bit on the oversized end, and I guess I didn't show you that. A little bit bigger than, but it's gotta fit this marble uh, container. It does break down a little bit. Uh, but that is this one. I'm going to put this out of my way, or in five seconds, we're going to hear a loud crash. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, the next one I have is the one I'm going to show you on the overhead, and it is called Imhotep the Duel. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Imhotep, which is a larger board game um, that had these uh, wooden cubes, and you were collecting them on boats and bringing them back to your player to score in different sets. This is a two-player version. It doesn't have those wooden cubes, but it does uh, kind of feature the boats, even if it's just sort of a, a little bit of a, not a gimmick, but they don't really sail or move in the game, but they are adorable little boats parked at the dock. We have, uh, this game is in German. Uh, the game, if you were to buy it at the store, would be in English. Our copy from the library is when we first imported them from Germany. But let's talk about it a little bit. It's a two player only game. One person's gonna play black, one person's gonna play white, just like chess. And on your turn, you're going to either place out a worker or you're going to claim some tiles from rows or columns with workers already in it or if you already have some of these bonus tiles, you're gonna play them. So here, let's just do a little example. So black would go here, maybe white would come over here, and then black would go there. Now that there are two players in one of the rows or columns, but right now there's only this one, looks like this. There's two here and two here. The white player would have a choice. They could um, take some tiles from here, or they could make the black ones take some tiles from here. Uh, but the way it would work is you say, okay, I'm gonna take tiles from the boat. We're gonna offload the boat. Let's say white wants to do it here. The one that is closest to the boat is going to take the tile that is farthest away. So they would take this piece and remove their worker. And then the next one is black and they are the next uh, in line. So they would take the middle tile. Now that's also true if they were here, this would just get skipped. They're the next token available and they're gonna take the one in the middle. And then you're gonna place your tiles in the appropriate scoring sections. Each player has their own uh, scoring locations. 
And that's really the whole game. You're trying to collect those, place the workers and choosing when the, uh, to pull a certain row or column. And you do want to tactically do that to keep your opponent from taking the tile that maybe they were hoping to get from this whole row by making them uh, remove themselves from here. So they're not actually going to end up taking this one. In this scenario, they would then only be allowed to take these two tokens. The tiles themselves um, sometimes have sends on them. Those are going to go on to the pyramid scoring, and it's just going to score you some points, one for every circle at the end of the game in the easy mode. There is a more advanced mode that scores kind of different. Uh, you want to have sets of one, two, three, and four, so those would be good for uh, the back side, the front side. You really just want to get a lot of circles. These uh, little pyramid tiles, there's two types of pyramid tile. And <laughs> those are gonna go onto your pyramid. Uh, so you're gonna actually build two separate pyramids, a light and a dark colored pyramid. Three, two, one would form a full pyramid and you uh, score a certain amount of points depending on how tall each of your pyramids are. And you score each of those individually. And then there is the obelisk which is quite simple. Again, you can't read it because it's in German, but what it means is you're, whenever you take one of these, you're just gonna start to build a tall obelisk out from uh, this tile, and you'll get a point for each of those. And whoever has the tallest obelisk at the end of the game is going to score an extra six points. So you're sort of fighting over those with your point. And then these numbered mask tiles, these are gonna go around uh, the, uh, I think it's the crypt, and you would actually place that number where it corresponds onto that tile. And you want to have groups of tiles. The larger the group, the higher number of points. You can have multiple different groups. A single tile counts as a group of one, which is still worth a point. If you're playing on the back side, you actually want to have them as few, uh, as many different groups as possible, because each group on its own is worth four. It doesn't matter how big it is. So a bunch of singles is the most valuable. Uh, the obelisk one uh, has uh, different levels. You would have to have a certain number. Um, uh, the first person, I think, to five gets 12 points. The second person to get to five would get six points. And these different pyramids. Uh, I forget what the special bonus on the back does. So we're going to skip that one. But you're taking these tiles, you're adding them to your scoring, and you're then adding new tiles out onto the boats. These special blue tiles allow you to do different things on your turn instead of just placing a person and taking a boat, offloading a boat. For example, if you played this on your turn instead, you get to place two or three figures all at once. Or you'd get to place one or two, one figure and then also offload a boat. Or you can switch the location of things in boats. And you can also just randomly take a tile from any one of the boats. So the special bonuses definitely allow you to break the rules of the game and um, uh, kind of tactically get ahead of your opponents. I think it is a fantastic two-player game, one that can be played over and over and over again. It has um, uh, both the, the hard and the easy side of scoring, so it gives you some variability. And it's only 19.95, so that is Imhotep the Duel. Again, our copy is in German, the copies in the store are in English. <laughs> and if it sounds intriguing, the larger box version is also really good. You are moving and choosing when to kind of sail from a port, which gives you certain uh, these really lovely chunky wooden, uh, wooden blocks that they're, you're then using to uh, have your different scoring methods back at your player area. But this is a great two-player implementation because it feels different, and yet it is still um, related to the big race game. All right, moving on, uh, something a little bit newer. It's the newest game, so what prompted this this week is Cloud City, which is a new game from Blue Orange Games. And this is a three-dimensional game. And normally this is the one I would have uh, set up to show you kind of in its entirety, but it, it really, uh, I have an overhead camera here, and um, it, it's uh, three-dimensional, so it would have been better at the side. So I'm hoping I can show you here but uh, all players are gonna start out with a single tile and then a hand of tiles that they can see and choose from. And you're gonna be building off of this, a grid of nine tiles, three by three, will be the end of the game. It plays super quick. But whenever you have a tile in front of you, you're also gonna take a block that matches the color. 
So yeah, it's a bit out of order, but there's three different sizes. Blue is always small, green is always middle, brown is always largest. You add it to your tile, and then you're gonna build out from there. And when you choose to place tiles in the future, they're gonna go next to the already existing tiles that have those blocks standing on them. So here, if I can show you on the side, maybe I'll make a better example. How about that? No, that won't work. <laughs> this is like the dexterity game. Watch them to balance things live on camera without knocking them over. <laughs> so then you'd be able to place them, have this here, and then you're going to uh, see if there's anywhere you want to create a little walkway. Now the walkways are of various sizes, including these little guys, so that would work here. If I had it even, it would sit on there. Um, the farther apart that they are, so if this tile, hmm, I can't do that. No, no, I can't really line it up without them being right next to each other. I don't think, because there's that, that big tall building in the way. But when they're farther apart is when it's better, because then you're gonna able to place longer, Bridges. So there's like two and getting up to five. And then the largest of them all in all colors, because you can do it on all heights, is eight. Now this is the council votes you're getting from designing your city. You're trying to get approval from the council at the end of the game. You're uh, placing your bridges between the different layers. It's all very puzzly. You're just trying to figure out how you want to place those placements. You can't build over sections of that grid that haven't yet been built. So you really are maybe setting yourself up for later. You can choose to abstain from placing bridges. Uh, if you think that'll be in your way later, you can't uh, kind of rest over the top of the middle of one. It has to um, just only touch the two that it's bridging. And it can go over one if, it, if it's shorter or under if it's taller and there's another bridge above it. But as far as actually resting on a third uh, uh, building of the same height, you can't do that. But at the end of the game, you're gonna look down and you're gonna add up all the different numbers on all the different levels and whoever has the most points wins. It's a fantastic um, three-dimensional game. It's, it's uh, super uh, easy to pick up and learn. And it then also has kind of these, oh, sorry, these uh, advanced cards that some, then start asking for specific things. Like if you can build uh, some walkways that are include uh, all the numbers, one, two, three, five, and eight, you're gonna get uh, eight points. Or uh, if you're gonna use, uh, find out what your, the longest walkway you have, and, oh, that's not the one. Uh, well, like having long walkways in certain uh, colors of green or blue will get you some more points. And so have different, uh, uh, I don't know, blueprints or <laughs> requirements from the city that people want you to have those. So if you can provide it in your city plan, you get more votes from the council and whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. So that's Cloud City. That's the new one out from Blue Orange. It's actually only $29.99, which I think is fantastic for this lovely big box place to just uh, wonderfully because you're kind of just really building your own uh, structure it's just uh, you could probably play it by yourself which is good this time of uh, year all right uh, then we're taking it into uh, one the last one today um, it's sort of the most different it was one we'd had carried for a little bit nobody in store had played any of them we'd played the exit game which is a series of sort of escape rooms at home but the same company came out uh, with uh, these things called adventure games and this one is adventure games the dungeon that I brought to kind of show you although I can't really show you much without spoiling it but it was designed by Phil Walker Harding and Matthew Dunstan so it's a paired design uh, but it is one that can be played solo two player three player or four player really um, uh, with with solo you're sort of playing a two player game you're having two characters but um, I played it with uh, two and we really, it's just a cooperative exercise. So you're really just kind of keeping track of different players because it's a uh, sort of like a venture computer game, like a mist or any of those, um, uh, I'm totally blanking, but I play these games all the time on, on my phone and computers like where you're exploring a space and you're trying to figure out how to open doors what levers do, you're talking to people, and it comes with a really big 
uh, set of cards and uh, locations as well as objects that you can earn. I had one to show you, won't show you the number, but you can earn things like keys and a flash and a space at you. So it'll have different things with numbers on them. And uh, then it has this big thick adventure book and you can have somebody kind of flip through when you're getting a number and read what happens at that location. But you can also pair the objects with the numbers. Like I wanna try key uh, number one at door number two. And so you would add one and two and then read that also in the book. But the best thing I discovered when I was learning this game is it comes with an app which made it super immersive because it has a wonderful British man reading to you uh, all these things. You just enter the numbers in your phone and it reads it to you with this wonderful storytelling voice as you're going through the adventure. So instead of having somebody of the group just read it, which you can do and that's fun too and if you have more theatrical people in your group, but we had uh, this uh, app reading it to us and it was just you sort of closed your eyes and you really feel like you're trying to figure out and solve this adventure and you have okay well let's go talk to that guy again and then you have you can take notes and you want to write things down uh, there's three chapters we played one chapter so I haven't even finished the story it took about 90 minutes to do one chapter so each chapter is about 90 minutes uh, but when you're done you can gift the box to a friend or wait three years and play it again because you'll probably forget what you need to do and who you need to talk to but the app, uh, which is free and you can just download it, uh, it tells you on the, in the box where to get it. Um, fantastic. It also teaches you how to play the game, so you don't even have to read the rule book if you want. And then it will have somebody read all the things from the book as you find them. And when there isn't an entry or you enter a combination that doesn't work, it might even have something witty to say or just no entry or doesn't work. Um, but I really enjoyed playing that uh, with just two players. Uh, having more, you're still working cooperatively, trying to make all your decisions. You do have health points and you can uh, get hurt and certain people will have to be like, okay, I'm the one's going to try to open the door or uh, making choices like that so you know who's going to get hurt or get cursed or uh, I don't want to give anything away, but you're trying to explore your way through the dungeon <clears throat> uh, in adventure games. Now this is 1995. There are three versions currently out, a dungeon, monochrome, and a volcanic island. They're all the same price. I now want to play them all, so you should beat me back to the store before they're all sold out. <laughs> uh, but they're, uh, it was a lot of fun, and I think it would even be fun uh, solo, just like when I play them on my app, but instead of staring at a screen, I could kind of close my eyes and be immersed in the story and uh, not have to look at a, a yet another screen. So those are the five games here, uh, Gizmos. Well, thanks for joining me. <laughs> thanks for joining me again this week to talk about these games. And uh, they will be 10% off in store all next week until next Thursday evening. And uh, they'll kind of be out in a center area of the store. We are still welcoming people in with masks. There's hand sanitizer. Uh, we're only letting in about uh, 10 people at a time. And uh, you can also still order uh, by calling in and do curbside pickup and we'll be able to bring it out for you or uh, the normal delivery function um, on our website. And these uh, deals will also be on there so you can have the games delivered to you if you're watching from afar. Thanks again and I will see you next week with another set of five fantastic featured games. Thank you very much.